Despite all the feats we got access to through our various Slayer talents and all those other myriad abilities, we still have feats to cover for the first edition Pathfinder Slayer. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Joining me is my most adorable co-host, Nora, journeyman storyteller and initiate to the ninth circle of lore. Today we are covering the feat selection for the first edition Pathfinder Slayer, and even though we took a lot of feats with the various Slayer options that, that we took through the Slayer talents last episode, there's still many more that we want to go over here. And also, I will be getting an announcement video out soon covering all the big changes coming to the gamers den here uh explaining some things in particular why my work has slowed in getting videos out and i assure you there is a good reason for all of that i doubt many people are super upset about that the only thing that might be upset is the almighty algorithm of youtube but uh, that's neither here nor there uh today Today, like I said, we'll be covering feats and we'll get into that in just a moment. But remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. And it actually just occurred to me that I do need to cover something pointed out by Captain Crank in the Slayer Talents Episode 1, is that trap finding does allow you to disable magical traps, so that's another great reason to have that ability. It's, I didn't say it couldn't do that, I just forgot to list it in the midst of doing everything else. And also, uh, Captain Crank is not wrong when they say that uh, taking a Slayer talent to pick up combat trick to get a feat is maybe just a little bit more of one of the more, I guess, boring choices that you could make. I don't think it's certainly a bad choice. You know, uh, it's a useful feat, especially in context of everything that we're going to be doing with this build. But there are many more options, and it just strikes me as I read over everything and see the different comments, thoughts, and advice from folks or things that they point out that I miss. It really strikes me just how customizable this class is, right along there with the Oracle, the, uh, the uh, Summoner, and so many other classes. Like These later classes, especially these hybrid classes, just allow you to really... Uh, fine-tune the different little bits of minutia of your character to exactly what it is you want to do. And it just reminds me that I should emphasize to you all that these guides are just that. They're guides. Take them with a grain of salt. Um, certainly, if you find any mistakes I make, don't hesitate to point them out. With some of these classes, I am learning right alongside with folks, and there are plenty of people who know more than me. I may bill myself as a master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, and I do think I am those things. I do believe that, but part of becoming a master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire is learning from your mistakes and learning from people who are more knowledgeable than you. Never, ever, ever stop learning, no, no matter what the subject is. But now let's actually leave all that behind and start covering feats. And to begin things here, we have weapon focus at level one as the human bonus feat if you decide to play a human. You gain a plus one attack bonus with the selected weapon, and in this case, you're going to want to go composite longbow. Now, just bear in mind, if you're not playing a human, just scoot every single feat along by one in the spot on this list here. Now, following that, for level one feat, we are going to pick up power attack. Minus one to attack to get a plus two to damage, or plus three if you're two-handing your weapon. And this increases every four attack bonus that you get. So by the time you hit level four, you're taking a minus two attack penalty, but getting plus four to your melee damage, or plus six at level four. Then for your level four or three feet, you're picking up deadly aim. This gives you a minus one penalty to your ranged attack, but gets you a plus two damage. And like power attack, this increases by every four attack bonus that you get. So you'll get that minus two attack penalty and then get a plus four bonus to damage. Now, power attack and deadly aim, you may not be using all the time, 
but you'll be using them frequently enough given that you have a great attack bonus and great physical stats to help boost your ability to hit. And don't forget that by using weapon focus with the composite longbow, when you're making that attack with deadly aim, you're negating that minus one penalty that you have right there. And eventually when you get point blank shot using the Slayer's talent, uh, that we selected, you're going to be negating that even further. So you're going to have significant uh, uh, chances to hit while giving a great boost to your damage all the way around. Absolutely fantastic to have, especially for an archery build. Then at level 5, we're picking up a feat that gives us a great deal of utility with Shadow's Shroud. At uh, level 5, this requires Knowledge Planes 5 ranks into it. Now, Knowledge Planes I did not list in the Skills section because, one, as I've mentioned before, we uh, uh, I am learning still about this class and I came across this feat in a guide and it just seemed absolutely perfect, especially for an archery build. So. This is a skill that you can uh, get added in. Even if it's not a class skill for you, you can still put five ranks into it and gain this ability, which allows you to use shadow to conceal yourself and roll stealth as a swift action, even in areas of bright light. This feat functions even on planes that don't share a border with the plane of shadow. Just bear in mind that creatures that are able to see in magical darkness uh, we'll still be able to see you as normal, but otherwise this is essentially working like hide in plain sight, which is huge. That's an absolutely great utility to have. And my most adorable co-host here has a picture she is showing off from our adventures and escapades in Kingdom Hearts. She's drawn several Heartless, the Darkness, Sora. It's absolutely wonderful, and I will have a picture of that posted for you folks later. But then, at level 7, we have Combat Reflexes. This gains you a number of extra attacks of opportunity equal to your dexterity modifier. This works great for melee, this will work great for your archery options as we keep building into this, especially when you get uh, some of the uh, archery uh, combat feats through the Slayer's Talent that lets you pick up the Ranger uh, range combat style. Now, then we move on from there, going up to level 9, and we get Snapshot. This lets you threaten a 5-foot radius around you when wielding a ranged weapon. Now, again, given that we are specializing in being able to use our tree even in close in a melee range, allowing us to keep operational even or at just about any range, this will be useful for you and pairs nicely with combat reflexes. Then for level 11, we're taking Clustered Shots. On a full attack with a ranged weapon, total the damage from all of your attacks that hit before applying the target's damage reduction. So instead of taking, say, 10 points of damage off of every single attack, if you make four attacks and hit your target with all four, you're only taking off that 10 points of damage once, which is a huge boost to your ability to take out targets. Then at level 13, we take Gang Up. Count as flanking if two or more allies are threatening an opponent, regardless of your position next to them. So you don't need to have uh, an ally on the opposite side to provide a flanking bonus. Again, this is going to be massively useful, especially since if you recall, Slayers get a sneak attack. So that sneak attack adds extra damage dice, and so being able to do that regardless of positioning will be very helpful. So if you're working with a mage or a summoner or a ranger that has an animal companion, or even a druid with an animal companion and using summon nature's ally, you're going to have many, many opportunities to get into a flanking position without having to follow the usual rules for it, meaning again, your damage output is going to remain significantly high. Then at level 15, we are going to pick up Focus Target. Reduce the number of studied targets you can have and gain an equal bonus to remaining studied targets. So what that means is if you're able to uh, to study four targets and you decide you only want to focus on one, you can use this to reduce the amount of focused tar or studied targets by three, giving you a plus three bonus to your normal bonuses already in place with the studied targets uh, ability. 
so that's a huge boost to save DCs for any abilities you might be using on the target. That's a huge boost to your damage, your ability to hit them, and any of the other skill bonuses that you get out of that ability. So again, another feat that yields a great deal of utility and is one that could arguably be taken earlier, but with the number of different feats that we have loaded into this build, it's kind of hard to pick where exactly we want to go. And so this is going here. So it's still a significant bonus, still is going to be useful, and for your Slayer abilities uh, with uh, save DCs, if you have a target that you really want to help make sure it does not make the save DC, this can be a means of doing that. Then at level 17 we pick up Improved Snapshot where you threaten an additional 5 foot ranged with a ranged weapon uh, around you. So that's a 10 foot threaten radius allowing you to make uh, attacks of opportunity using combat reflexes as well. So you're basically going to be going full Legolas on people here. You're going to fight with the bow in close, putting arrows into targets, using rapid shot, many shot, getting just clouds of arrows in the air. Then at level 19, it comes down to player choice because I'm not really sure what to select here that would be significant. Everything else with this build is in place. Uh, there are certainly many, many options, but I would leave that up to you. You could pick up toughness for extra hit points and make yourself that much more survivable in close and in a melee, in that grind, which is where you're going to be. But with this build overall, because we're just going to be constantly using our bow, the most significant thing you have to worry about is keeping enough arrows on hand. Because you'll be able to engage the foes at long range, you'll be able to uh, engage them at mid range. Are they flying? No problem, still shoot at them. They get in close in melee, you have power attack if you really need to swap over to a great sword or a spear or whatever kind of two-handed melee weapon you have on hand and you're not going to do bad with it but you can still stick with your bow and still put arrows into people and get a significant amount of damage being just poured right onto them but what do you think go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts did you like today's video did you dislike it let me know your thoughts either way and what feats you might recommend or how you might rearrange this overall and we'll engage in discussion in the comments down below. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. This has been my most adorable co-host, Nora, journeyman storyteller and initiate to the Ninth Circle of Lore, and her most incredible Kingdom Hearts fan art drawing. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.